So I want to first look at the person who is the complete architect of this war, which is obviously Vladimir Putin. And I want to go inside for a minute into his psychology, into his mindset, because I think in doing that, we can figure out a lot of the puzzles of this war. And the person that Putin reminds me most of in history is obviously Joseph Stalin. And in, in, in The Laws of Human Nature, I have a chapter that I describe, I go into depth on Stalin called Complete Control, where Stalin's main objective in life, his main goal, his main ambition, was to gain complete control of every aspect of the Soviet Union. And I describe a scene towards the end of his life where he has all of his top people in the Soviet Union. They would come over to his dacha outside Moscow. He'd get them drunk and then he would put on a record and he would force them to dance with each other. These, these men, these middle-aged men. And it was completely humiliating for them, but they were like puppets that he so controlled in their minds, in their actions, that he could literally make them dance with each other. And so I feel that Putin is motivated by the same desire for gaining complete control over everything around him. And so what is the opposite of control? The opposite of control is chaos or unpredictability. And so whenever Putin encounters any slight bit of unpredictability or chaos, he makes these moves to gain control over it so that he never has to experience that again. And so slowly, bit by bit, over the 20 years of his reign, he has created this empire, this world, where one man controls every single aspect of Russian life, a country, the largest country by far on our planet, an immensely complex society. One man governs this completely. And, you know, the way to do that is to create, is to work on psychology, to create a myth, an illusion of this power. That's because one person can't control all of that. It depends on creating a lot of these kind of magical illusion-like effects. So let's go into that for a moment. The first layer of his control would be the oligarchs, the men who control the wealth of Russia, largely through oil. And early on in his career, he saw that some of the oligarchs weren't really obeying him. They weren't really on the same page as he was, like Khodorovsky. So he made his moves to gain control over them. He eliminated any kind of laws that protected their wealth. And so he created a situation and their wealth depended on completely on him. If for some reason he decided that they were turning against him, he would create laws and he would take their, their money, their wealth away and give it to somebody else. Then there's also the, what is known as the Siloviki, which in Russian means the men of force. These are the most powerful men around Putin in, in government who kind of have his ear. And he's made them complicit in the many crimes he's created. And he's created a situation that if Vladimir Putin falls, they fall with them. Their power, their access to power completely depends on him. So that's one incredibly critical layer of his control. The second layer would be the government itself, this vast bureaucracy. Early on in his career, it seemed that alternative parties, political parties could evolve that could perhaps challenge him. And a few people won governorships in other regions of Russia that were in op opposition parties. As somebody who that needs control, he could not stand that sense of losing it. So he created new laws, obviously, making these parties basically illegal, basically making so governors in Russia were something that he appointed, no longer elections. And elections are essentially a farce. And so as it's evolved, any the slightest opposition party is eliminated. And so to this day now, there's not even a trace of any kind of opposing political will left in Russia. So now he controls the oligarchs, the men of power, and the government. Then there's the media. Early on in his career, it seemed that there were some voices in television, et cetera, that were challenging him. So he basically bought all of the television stations. He essentially controls them. And then he spread it to all the various different forms 
of press. Internet was allowed to kind of go on its own, but now he's completely crushed that. So with now his fingers completely on every level of the media, he controls the narrative of Russia for the Russian people. He's able to play on their greatest insecurities as, you know, Russia's being threatened by the West, etc. He's able to dominate the story that people absorb in Russia. He's able to manufacture whatever truth he wants to spread. A lot of people support him for the reasons I've just mentioned because of this control and because in some degrees they maybe admire somebody who seems so strong. But then there are little pockets of opposition, little pockets of people who oppose him, like Navalny, etc. And so what somebody who's trying to gain and spread this complete control depends on is the use of fear, intimidation, and even terror. So if you oppose him, the consequences are going to be fierce. With the control that he has created, with these what I call outsized effects, because keep remembering, one man is, has this insane amount of power, okay? So a key element is the military. And he has developed this military. He's put all the money and resources into technology, into weaponry, into missiles, into hypersonic missiles, into tanks, etc. Now, war is, is, is an arena that's notoriously fickle. Um, it's called the fog of war. So if Vladimir Putin, like Stalin, cannot stand the slightest shred of chaos or unpredictability, how can you possibly have that in warfare, the most unpredictable of all environments? Well, he has created his own kind of strategy based on what we've talked about, psychology, terror, fear, and intimidation. With all of the money that he has stolen basically from the people and invested in these weaponry, what he does is he bombs the hell out of the place like he's done in Syria, like he's done in Chechnya. And so within days, he's created this terror, this sense of invincibility, right? He doesn't have to have a complex organization of an army. If he literally destroys the infrastructure, if he terrorizes the civilians, if he makes anybody daring to oppose him quake in fear over the consequences, then he wins psychologically first and they surrender. If you bomb the hell out of cities, if you level them, then you control the dynamic completely. And he's used this brilliantly prior to these wars on the world stage. In, in 33 Strategies of War, um, law number 15 is called Control the Dynamic, Forcing Strategies. And what it is, is it's the ultimate of an offensive warfare. So on the world stage, he has used this, the same thing that he has applied to the country of Russia, where he makes everybody react to him, where he completely controls the dynamic. So he meddling in our elections, you know, fiddling with Europe and European politics, you know, invading Crimea, etc., continually putting other people on their heels and making them react to him, which is a form of control, just like Stalin controlled the men around it and making them dance to his tune. He's making everybody in the world react and dance to what he creates. Okay, so war is hard to manage that, but he's created this method of warfare that allows him to have this complete control. But what it depends on, as it depends on Ukraine, is very quickly creating the sense of terror and intimidation and surrender through the bombing campaign, and then using uh, local quislings. The word quisling means people in a country who basically are going to support another country and betray their own their own nation out of money or etc. And they're kind of become puppets of the invading army. Those are quislings. He's very effective in using them in Syria, in Chechnya, in Georgia, etc. Okay, so it depends on the strategy of a very quick lightning strike with his missiles, his weaponry, his air force, creating terror, creating surrender, and using his puppets from within to gain control politically of the situation.